Welcome back, everybody. Today is going to be an updated carry hero tier list that you all have been asking so much about. Without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about carries for 7.32D. So first, we will start from the bottom of the barrel, the F tier. These are the heroes that I pretty much would not catch myself dead playing. These three heroes are Phantom Assassin, Troll, and Gyro. Uh, I think Troll still has one of the worst ultimates in the entire game, maybe the worst spell in the entire game, uh, unreliably carrying. I believe Gyro is just simply understated, doesn't have a particularly strong laning phase against a lot of the popular offlaners right now. Is just generally underwhelming. And PA, she just doesn't feel powerful at any stage of the game. To be honest, I feel like I'm useless for the first 20 minutes, and I'm not particularly godly after that. Moving on to the D tier. These are heroes that I think, if you really like playing them, go ahead. But I would not recommend these heroes, as I believe they are quite weak in the meta. Uh, what I kind of see as a common trend amongst all of these heroes is that even Lone Druid, to some extent, these are all space takers for like the first 15 minutes of the game and you really just don't feel their presence they don't have amazingly strong laning phases or if they do in the case of like lone druid potentially luna it feels really hard to turn that laning phase into something meaningful of like early tower taking or objective pressure it just doesn't feel like the either the timing windows of these heroes is strong or it just feels like they are a complete detriment to their team for the first 15 to 20 minutes moving on to c tier this is the hero list of what i would just call average if you're looking for like an average character one of these heroes is one of your favorites. Just know that I think, I don't really think you're bad off picking these heroes, but these are definitely not the creme de la creme of 7.32D. Some people might be specifically wondering about heroes like Ricky that I've talked about being so broken. And a simple answer for that is I think he's broken as a support. I think Carrie's job right now is a lot of flash farming and a lot of long range damage dealing slash poke. It feels like for the most part, heavy commitment heroes that don't have innate survivability feel pretty bad. And heroes that don't flash farm the map or jungle also feel pretty bad. Uh, and examples like Lesh and Medusa, I think the frontliners type carries that are stationary and walk at you aren't generally popular against what heroes we will see later on in the higher tiers. Going on to the B tier. These are heroes that I definitely think are above average. You'll find really good games for them, and I think they offer something very specific to the game that is quite useful, especially given the right circumstances. So I don't think these heroes are absolutely broken, and I'm still leaning towards mainly picking them last in the draft, unless I like see my laning opponent or feel really good about these heroes' synergy with what my teammates have already picked. Then maybe I will third fourth them in the draft. Well, what I like so much about Bloodseeker Void is that they go with the most popular carry item right now, which is Maelstrom. Feels really powerful just overall as a carry item. Bloodseeker has a pretty strong laning phase. Void can pretty reliably get the Midas Maelstrom by going for the max time walk build that you guys saw in the 23 Savage YouTube video that I made. I've been having great success with that sort of build. These heroes don't necessarily flash farm the early game, but they're good against what's good, which you guys will see in a sec. And they also have pretty decent reliable laning stages. Terrorblade's like a hand-me-down illusion hero right now. I think he's the second best out of all the illusion heroes. And then Anti-Mage has really specific Specifically good lane matchups, same with Life Stealer, they can be lane dominators. Clinks thrives on chaos and pubs and lack of coordination, and his win rate in lower MMRs is insanely high. So I put him in the B tier. I actually think Dawnbreaker as a tempo-based carry is really nice right now as well. Morphling has his kind of cheese games where they just can't burst you when you're low HP, so you get to farm and be really aggressive. And then SF really dumps on a lot of these melee offlaners that have no stuns, uh, with his triple raise combo being enough to bring these beefy boys down. So I like SF a lot as well. Moving on to the A tier. These are the heroes that I will generally find myself defaulting to in the second round of the draft if I'm not sure what else to pick. The two ranged heroes being Drow and Sniper, I think they are by far the most reliable, agi, right-click ranged guys, comparing them to like Luna, Arc Warden, Medusa, Gyro, and their laning stages are quite good, and they scale very well also, Ursa and Slark, out of all the heavy commitment heroes, they kind of have get out of jail free cards, which I think is really nice, which either allows them to prolong the use of their BKB or just perhaps skip BKB altogether or at least delay even buying the BKB. Since BKB still has a very long cooldown, heroes that rely on it, I don't have innate survivability, are just naturally weaker. An example being PA. And last 
but not least, last but the absolute most, actually, is Lena and Naga in the S tier. I have been having a ton of success with Naga myself. I always go for the Treads Yasha Radiance build that you guys can see all the time on my streams sitting at a, like a 65-70% win rate with that. I see a bunch of people going the Manta Orchid build as well. So there's two different builds that I think are quite potent, depending on what you think fits your playstyle. And what makes Naga so broken is that she's similar to Alk in the sense that she gets a ton of network. She's going to be like six slotted in the 30 minute, 35 minute mark. But the difference between her and these other really greedy carries is that she can push out lanes super early and she doesn't need her team to actually protect her because her illusions will take the more dangerous farm either the lane or the jungle camps while her hero can safely clear the safe parts of the map so she's not negatively contributing to the game doesn't need help and she flash farms so all that put together just makes her the strongest melee carry um an illusion hero by a large margin right now and then one a lot of you may not have heard of if you guys haven't been keeping up in the last couple weeks is Lena is getting first pick first band in all of my games and at the highest of the highest MMR bracket she's had 2380 games played with a 55% win rate being pretty much exclusively first pick first band and this is predominantly carry Lena guys uh, there is a little bit of min action but it is predominantly carry Lena and the build has been to go for Falcon Blade Brown Boots into Maelstrom, BKB Bots, Gleitnir, Satanic Silver Edge. The only variance is exactly like what order she buys these items, but it's pretty much the same items every single game. What I would like to point out about both of these two carries is that they are insanely strong in lane and they flash farm very Fast. That's what makes them the creme de la creme when you compare them to heroes of similar types, whether it be the flash farmers like Naga or the ranged damage dealers like Drow and Sniper. Lena just kind of does it all. The only issue is, is that she always has to be hitting creeps because of the nature of her fiery soul. And in my experience thus far, your team generally isn't very happy about that. So the boots of travel allow you to connect to your team from anywhere on the map making sure that you go into fights with those fiery soul stacks. Uh, what I would like to mention about these two heroes is their counters. The things that I've found to be most annoying when playing with or against these heroes. Lena has a tough time dealing with the blade mail taunters, such as Axe and Legion. If she is going to stand still dishing out damage, and she will die to her own damage. And she also has trouble dealing with the likes of Ursa, Heroes that can just prevent her from standing still and feeling comfortable because they will do the appropriate amount of damage to bring her down. I also like Bloodseeker as a hero that can prevent heroes like Drow, Sniper, and uh, Lena from running away and then has a way to man fight them with his Blood Rage and a Basher. Uh, as Naga, I don't think there's really any matchups that are absolutely unplayable, but it's heroes that can kill your illusions conveniently like Leshrac and also heroes with built-in gap close and ma magic immunity, most notably Pangolier being very annoying so that's my carry hero tier list for 7.32d hope you guys use this to your advantage when drafting in pubs and i'll see you guys for the next one